Yes. Hey, welcome to our Liberty House. My name is Lucas. Today we're in the kitchen. We are going to be making a tomato galette. It's tomato season. It's early summer. Tomatoes are starting to ripen. We are so excited. One of our Berkeley tie dyes is finally ripe and ready to eat. I've been thinking about this recipe since all winter long and I had to just go buy another tomato to have enough for this recipe. And you're gonna ask, what is a galette? A galette is a mixture between like a pizza and a pie. And it can be savory, a little sweet, they're great. They're fun to make and they're really easy. You could do it on a weeknight. Simple ingredients, just a pie crust and the oven. Let's get going. Okay, let's do the prep work. So I'm gonna start with some garlic. This is some actually some elephant garlic we grew in the yard. And if you guys wanna just follow along, I'm not gonna go over exacts in this recipe on the YouTube, but click down below, we'll have the full recipe. So you could normally just use regular garlic. I'd use like two to three garlic cloves. We just wanna get some minced garlic um, for kind of a topping. If you're super sensitive to garlic, just reduce it down as usual. So I'm just gonna cut this up. This looks great. I probably won't use all of this, guys. Just mince it down. I do want to get it fine. That's why I'm using uh, this garlic crusher. Okay, so now for the tomatoes. And like I said, we're going to want to cut these. <laughs> and these heirlooms are super fun. They're really hard to kind of cut, but we just want to make some slices. So get your knife sharp. And we're going to start making, I'll kind of do this towards you. Kind of about, this is about the thickness we want because we want them to cook, uh, but we don't want them to get like crispy necessarily. So that's about the size we want them. And then we'll just keep cutting it. Kind of where it gets a little tough around the stem. We can always come back, you know, we'll clean this kind of, you don't really want that. Just because it'll be a little bitter, a little stemmy. I mean, look how great that thing looks. Super meaty, not a ton of seeds. We got this from San Diego Seed Company. It's a Berkeley tie-dye. It's pretty common. Um, you can get them from a lot of different seed providers. Tomatoes can be, you know, obviously moist and juicy and a little wet, and we don't want to make this galette soggy. We still want it to crisp up a little bit. We want it to be meaty, not moist. So a little tip here, we're going to put the tomatoes in um, any sort of colander. This is just a wire mesh strainer into a bowl, and then we're going to quick salt them and let them drain out. We'll kind of stir them up. We'll let them drain a little bit. Show what I'm gonna do. Let's get a little hands is wet. Usually I would just do a little pinch. Thanks, Beth. We'll do this kind of in in waves so we get salt on all the surfaces. And then we'll just stack some more in there. We'll let these drain while we prep the rest. Okay. So these will just sit here and drain. And this is a really good strategy for a lot of people in the kitchen for really water heavy vegetables. Just a little bit of salt before you cook them will help get a lot of that moisture out and you'll avoid using soggy vegetables in your dishes. So we just won't add any salt at the end. There we go, we'll let this sit. We'll give it a little shake. 
I'm talking like five minutes. You know, we just want to get some of the water content out of these. Okay, so while the tomatoes sweat down, we're gonna prep our pie crust. And this is a store-bought pie crust. Feel free to make one if you're a master baker. I find these really easy to use. And we've already um, greased the pan. And then we're going to just do a light brushing of oil over the pie crust. And we're gonna use this garlic scape oil that we made. If you follow us on Instagram, we made it. It's super good and we are just going to do light, light brushing. And then we are gonna add some feta cheese. And we're just gonna sprinkle it all around. And then here, I'm gonna kind of go over how much we want to leave for folding this galette over the top. So about that much is perfect, right? So we just want, it's about an inch, an inch fold over. You're not gonna go crazy big, but we want enough to be able to fold this over. So just think about that when you're adding your cheese. We'll kind of spread this out with our hands. It's a lot of cheese, but cheese is, cheese is life. Kind of went heavy on the one side. So, just spread. You know, break some of these bigger pieces up if you're feeling like it. Feta won't melt necessarily like normal pizza cheese, so you'll still get some nice big chunks. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let me uh, wipe my hands off here, clean up a little bit. And then we'll put the tomatoes on top, garlic, little balsamic reduction. We're good to go. I hate you so much. Okay, so while the tomatoes sweat down, we're gonna prep our pie crust. And this is a store-bought pie crust. Feel free to make one if you're a master baker. I find these really easy to use. And we've already um, greased the pan. And then we're going to just do a light brushing of oil over the pie crust. And we're gonna use this garlic scape oil that we made. If you follow us on Instagram, we made it. It's super good. And we are just going to do light, light brushing. Really easy. Just wanna get it all around. Don't wanna to go too heavy because like I said, we want this to crisp up a little bit. Nobody likes a Soggy pizza dough pie crust. Ignore my cat meowing for food in the back. Okay. So that's just been lightly oiled. And then we are gonna add some feta cheese. And we're just gonna sprinkle it all around. And then here, I'm gonna kind of go over how much we want to leave for folding this galette over the top. So about that much is perfect, right? So we just want, it's about an inch, an inch fold over. You're not gonna go crazy big, but we want enough to be able to fold this over. So just think about that when you're adding your cheese. We'll kind of spread this out with our hands. A lot of cheese, but cheese is, cheese is life. Kind of went heavy on the one side. So just spread, you know, break some of these bigger pieces up if you're feeling like it. Feta won't melt necessarily like normal pizza cheese, so you'll still get some nice big chunks. Okay, so that looks good to me. Let me uh, wipe my hands off here, clean up a little bit, and then we'll put the tomatoes on top. Garlic, little balsamic reduction. We're good to go. I hate you so much. All right, let's top it. And I'm actually gonna be singy and use our garden tomatoes first, just in case we have too many. But, we can go a little thick. 
This is going to be like a tomato pie. That sounds fun. Tomato pie. Just layer them down, get them tight. I feel like we're jumping into a TikTok craze because I remember like a while back there was like tomato and feta, tomato and feta all over TikTok. There's more of our good ones or our, our garden ones. Do it about this. Really just about two layers thick. Any thicker, it's it's gonna get mushy. So this to me is the perfect amount. Let's do the last one of ours. To me, the perfect amount of tomato covering. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add that garlic that we minced and just sprinkle it over the top. And if you don't like garlic, probably shouldn't watch our channel, but we like garlic. Garlic is love. Just sprinkle it all around. It'll melt into everything it touches as we cook. Okay. And then really light just gonna use a balsamic reduction. We have this in the pantry for salads and different applications, but balsamic and tomatoes can't go wrong, right? So just really, just gonna go really light. Like I said, this is a reduction, so it's already a little syrupy. So we're, it's, it's super condensed down. So I'm gonna go really light, just add a little bit of balsamic vinegar flavor. Alternatively, if you guys don't have this at home and you still wanna add a little balsamic, if you like that flavor, just use normal balsamic on the tomatoes when you're sweating them down. Just a little drizzle over the top will help impart that flavor in the tomatoes. Okay, so we got this thing galette formed and now the time is to just start Kind of folding it you kind of want to see here's the little the pinch and fold pinch fold pinch fold pinch and fold i'm going to say it ten thousand times so you guys remember it just a little pinch and fold we're just making like an open-faced pie pinch and fold and then the last one okay All right, before we get to the final step, let's point out Liberty, the namesake of this channel, who appears not to be interested in tomato collettes and just naps on the floor. Okay, so this is ready to go in the oven. Nice collette, folded over. And if you're like my wife, Beth, who just asked, do we need to oil or butter the edges of this crust? I'm gonna say no, because I oiled this pan, I greased this pan really well before I put the pie crust down so it absorbed a little oily and I really don't want it to get uh, an oily crust like I said I want this to be crispy so I don't think you need to do it time to go in the oven 450 for 15 minutes and we'll check it and see how it looks like after 15 minutes a little pepper not crazy pepper and tomatoes my fave time to go in the oven Okay, looks great. The galette is out of the oven, nice and crispy on the edge. Ends, the tomatoes are nice and cooked. And we're just gonna sprinkle a little bit of our garden fresh basil on here while it's still hot. Give us a nice little fresh element. And then we're gonna top it with also a little more Parmesan cheese just because we love cheese. So 
this is just going to go around it, basil all over, and then not too much, just enough. And this will actually add a little bit of a salty element so you don't have to top with salt. Right, guys that's a tomato galette easy to make took us 25 minutes at 450 degrees in the oven we'll let it cool down a little bit and we'll slice it up and we'll serve it really appreciate you guys watching this video today give us a thumbs up hit that like button for us and also subscribe to our channel if you want to see us bring our garden into the kitchen and also a ton of other gardening content have a good day as the dog is eating food in the back.